Good evening. We are the anchors of Queer News Tonight, and this evening we discuss the queer headlines. In Edendale, South Africa, a lesbian couple lost their lives due to a hate crime committed by one of the women's ex-partner. North Carolina Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson's extreme anti-LGBTQ views are damaging Trump's chances in the state, with polls showing a significant shift in support. DOJ indictment reveals anti-LGBTQ broadcasters, including Tim Pool and Dave Rubin, were unknowingly funded by Russian media outlets supporting Trump's 2024 campaign. USC's comedy roast of Kamala Harris featuring Milo Yiannopoulos and Gavin McInnes sparks outrage. Trump is back with his anti-trans slurs and false claims. This time, he was at a Moms for Liberty event in D.C. Well, good evening and welcome to Queer News Tonight. This is the world's first and only LGBTQ daily evening television news, broadcasting live and available on demand on your favorite streaming channels. We are proud to announce that YouTube has recognized Queer News Tonight, certified by analytics company vidIQ, that we now have more than 9.5 million views. More than half a million of you have watched this show in the last 60 days. Thank you. It is Thursday, September 5th, 2024, and we are live and literally out of the closet and into the headlines. So many of your important stories we are going to tell tonight on Queer News Tonight. This is the world's first live daily LGBTQ evening news show, literally out of the closet and into the headlines on Queer News Tonight. This is the world's first and only unedited live LGBTQ evening news show. Whatever happens, unique and LGBTQ news, you will see it and hear it. Hot Spots Magazine, Happening Out Television Network, is a nonprofit 501c3 media company in the same model of PBS and NPR, but specifically de designed for the LGBTQ community. Our mission is to support the 11 pillars of our LGBTQ community. We want to inform and educate the key issues of lesbian, trans, Latino, black, health care, seniors, students, faith, social justice, business, and queer culture. Help us support our community. We are part of one of the largest LGBTQ nonprofit media companies in America, Hotspots Magazine and Happening Out Television Network. In 2024, our magazine is celebrating 40 years of the LGBTQ experience, and our television, news, talk, and entertainment shows support our mission to educate the LGBTQ and broader community. Now let's meet tonight's anchors at Queer News Tonight. First up, let's welcome anchor Buddy Fry. A longtime South Florida resident, he supports many of our local nonprofit organizations like Julian's Fountain of Youth, one of my favorites, and the Stonewall National Library and Museum. Welcome, buddy. Thank you for having me tonight. Next, let's welcome Corey Billions. Corey is an LGBT, a proud LGBTQ community member from West Palm Beach. He has served as a pharmacy technician for 10 years. Welcome, Corey. Hello. <laughs> and next, let's welcome Francesca D'Amore. She is an advocate and holistic life coach. She is the current board secretary for Safe Schools South Florida. Her passion for supporting LGBTQ plus youth inspired her to found Trans Ed, which offers education solutions for transgender and non-binary young adults. Francesca is also the entertainment director for an event called My Hollywood Pride, and then is an executive committee member of the Broward Regional HIV Planning Council. Francesca, you'll be a keynote speaker at the TransCon on September 7th at the Pride Center. Uh, this year's TransCon themes are whole person well-being, um, celebrating queer community and engaging in our democracy. Tell me what's happening. Oh my God, I'm so excited about TransCon happening this Saturday from 10 a.m. until 6 p.m. And we're gonna have, I mean, they've put together a great um, event for the day, uh, Aqua Foundation for Women. They've been doing it every year. And I'm gonna be a keynote speaker and I'm really excited to tell my story in my own unique way. Nice. Um, there are also gonna be a lot of different workshops and Trans Ed is an organization I started last year. I founded, and Von Biggs is one of our founding board members. And we will be doing a workshop called Spilling the Tea, uh, Spilling the Trauma, 
So it's a holistic workshop using yoga, mm. uh, sound healing, journaling, and some crystals. And we'll also be tabling. So this is our first tabled event as transit. So I feel so official now. It's so awesome. So I'm happy to be there. Yeah. Very important. Uh, Francesca, you do a lot of great work. And um, I don't know, you can probably say it better than I can, but um, TransCon is for the whole community. So um, exactly. please come out and support um, our trans siblings, support the Aqua Foundation. They do amazing work. And um, it's really important that we help uh, get the word out. So uh, tell your friends and family, come out on Saturday. And of course, this is tonight's lead anchor, Jeff Oliviero. He is a financial advisor and certified financial planner with Truist Wealth in Fort Lauderdale. Jeff is one of the founders and president of the Hollywood LGBTQ Plus Council. He has served as co-chair for the National LGBTQ Task Force Gala since 2001. Welcome, Jeff. Thank you. I'm really excited. Uh, the Task Force Gala is coming up next month, so we hope to see all of you there and out in support. And we have a lot of exciting announcements coming up next week, so check them out. We are the reporters for Queer News Tonight, and this evening we begin with the queer headlines. The LGBTQ community in South Florida and across America is diverse. Our community across the world is vast, and here are the bullet points for the queer news for Thursday, September 5th, 2024. First up this evening, let's queer up the world. Queer News Tonight will broadcast show from Innsbruck and The Sound of Music, September 17th to the 26th. Queer News Tonight, the world's leading LGBTQ television news, continues its groundbreaking coverage with a two-week European broadcast starting September 17th. Following last year's shows from the Acropolis, the Greek Isles, Turkey's Ephesus, and Egypt's Great Pyramids, this year's highlight will be Munich's Gay Oktoberfest. The journey includes Bavaria's Mad King Ludwig's Ca Cinderella Castle, Austria's famous Sound of Music Mountain, the Italian Alps in Bolzano, and broadcasts from Liechtenstein and Switzerland. Tune in for two weeks of exciting and inclusive coverage from five Central European countries. You won't want to miss it. Next, let's queer up lesbian culture. Lesbian couple killed in hate crime in South Africa. In Edendale, South Africa, a tragic hate crime claimed the lives of a lesbian couple, uh, Nambulo Bixa and Minali Nagobo, 22. Last week, the pair was fatally shot while entering a taxi in what is being investigated as a hate crime. The suspect is identified as one of the women's ex-partner and the father of her child who reportedly could not accept the couple's queer relationship. The alleged perpetrator had a history of harassment towards the couple, prompting one of the victims to file a protection order against him. A friend of the victims expressed profound grief, stating, quote, all I know is that they were very much in love with each other, end quote. They also conveyed frustration over the lack of clear answers regarding the incident. Utingo Network, a local LGBTQ advocacy group, condemned the violence, highlighting the deep-seated homophobia in South Africa, particularly in rural areas. Local law enforcement confirmed that the case is under investigation with no arrests, yet urging anyone with information to come forward. The community remains in shock, grappling with the senseless loss and ongoing violence against queer individuals. Um, I don't think it can be stated, you know, any stronger than, you know, we know what has, has happened here in our own country and to, you know, kind of magnify how terrible the situation is for LGBTQ people um, outside of the United States, which is why, you know, I we continue to need to be the bastion of hope for um, this community and, and fight back against the attacks that are happening in our own government and our own backyard, um, because these, these messages are spreading across the world when these negative, negative um, stories come out from here, that it makes it okay if it's happening in America. Uh, absolutely. And I find, especially coming, you know, South Africa, they were one of the first countries yeah. to, uh, to be okay with gay marriage, same-sex marriage. Um, so you, you kind of think we're safe, but you're really not, especially in rural mm -hmm. pockets of Africa. Myself, being born and raised in Zimbabwe as well, um, I could never go back to Zimbabwe because I would probably not come out alive, which mm -hmm. is kind of scary. Unfortunate. And I travel the world, you know, so it's really unfortunate. So you're right. We do have to continue being a beacon of hope here and keep on fighting the fight, right? But we also have to educate because I think the most important thing that I 
uh, understood from that story is also that the largest percentage of hate in South Africa towards the LGBTQ is from the rural communities. And so much of Africa is so rural, there's not much of an outreach to educate and explain mm -hmm. and share lives that are, have common traits to, amongst us all, just for being human. You know, yeah. we all love, we all live, and we all work. Right. You know? Pray for the so, families. It's yeah. It's always sad, because yeah. the outcome is not going to be positive because the police are going to be investigating, I'm sure, for a really long time with very little to turn up. As they say, the suspect is the possible father or ex-lover. Ex yeah. So, you know, there's not going to be much push on that, I'm sure. And the families are going to be left, unfortunately, without their loved ones. But that is also important because we do have such an influence on the media worldwide that, especially in this political climate, that we have to fight the negativity, the misinformation about being LGBTQ so that it doesn't disseminate beyond mm. what, who needs to hear. I mean, the reality is we don't want to continue negative coverage from politi politicians and so that it, it's cast, it's uh, re-discussed in all these rural countries, you know, or, yeah. or you know, outside of the U.S. So vote, yeah. people, vote. The negative messages on the other side are very strong. Yeah. All right. So let's queer up politics. Shock. Robinson's controversial campaign risks Trump's North Carolina win. North Carolina Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson's anti-LGBTQ rhetoric is jeopardizing former President Donald Trump's chances in the state. Roberts Robinson, a gubernatorial Republican candidate, is known for his inflammatory remarks, including calling LGBT, LGBTQ people filthy and demons. Trump's endorsement of Robinson, calling him Martin Luther King on steroids, may backfire as recent polling reveals a significant backlash. Mick Mulvaney, Trump's former chief of staff, himself noted that Robinson's unpopularity could hinder Trump's campaign in North Carolina. He said, Trump is being weighed down by a very unpopular Republican candidate for governor. The latest polls show Robinson trailing Democratic opponent Josh Stein by up to 14 points, a stark contrast to the narrow margins in past gubernatorial races. David Plouffe of, Harris, of the Harris campaign sees Robinson's extremism as an adv advantage, suggesting that his unpopularity could bolster Democratic support. An Elon University poll indicates that one in six Republican voters might split their ticket, favoring a different party for governor compared to only 1 in 20 Democrats. Meanwhile, a Bloomberg Morning Consult poll shows Vice President Kamala Harris leading Trump by 1% in the state, a significant shift from Trump's 8% lead in July. With Stein and Harris outspending Robinson and Trump, and Robinson's fa falling in popularity due to his controversial stances, North Carolina could be a pivotal background, battleground state for the upcoming election. I think uh, I, this is stunning because, I mean, I'm stunned that, that Robinson's even a candidate, to be honest. There is not one group in North Carolina that he is not a, in, offended, mm -hmm. insulted, destroyed verbally, um, and just been disrespectful on every point and count. So the, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad about the 14-point lead, barring that the polls are true, because you know how polls are mm -hmm. fickle, mm -hmm. like most of the men I date. <laughs> But um, I'm just stunned. I'm just stunned, especially with his... Con I mean, he, there, there isn't a comment that he hasn't made that hasn't offended half the world. So... Um, I mean, I, I, I want to give it to the Republicans. They found someone that's more deplorable than <laughs> Donald Trump. So mm, um, this is that's... someone that even Donald Trump doesn't want to campaign with. Um, and I think it's important to always really say the words out loud that they're saying. Um, so when we cover stories, we don't just say that they're making offensive statements. Mm -hmm. um, this is someone who linked, you know, homosexuality to pedophilia mm -hmm. um, that um, said that, you know, he supports LGBTQ rights, but doesn't want um, sexually explicit materials given to children children about transgenderism or sexuality in schools, which of course is never being, never happening. Um, he's ridiculed school shooting victims. Mm -hmm. um, so that probably is a real popular thing after there was another school shooting, unfortunately, in the United States yesterday. And he's um, pronounced um, Holocaust denialism. So I think we've covered a lot of groups to be offended by it. Um, and also, you know, the reality is 
North Carolina is becoming a more purple state. Um, you know, I think we probably all have friends or, or acquaintances that have relocated to yes. North Carolina. Um, it's becoming a lot mm -hmm. more uh, liberal. Um, there's a lot of universities there and a lot of bright young people that hopefully will reject this person. I think that's pretty on brand for Republicans right now. It's like the Trump method. Mm -hmm. You attack, belittle, damage egos, lie, then you're at the top of the ticket. Yeah, he's a special kind of one. And that uh, unfortunately spills out into society at large, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, what's specific to, to Robinson, the fact that, you know, a lot of the statements that he's going against in all these different communities, people are bringing up his past. I mean, he, his wife and he had an abortion earlier in their, in their marriage, and he's denouncing abortion as murder. Strike mm -hmm. one. He's going after the LGBT community, calling us everything under the sun that's negative, and yet he has countless witnesses that when he was starting his life in the work community, he was a, worked for a Papa John's franchise, and yet he would spend most of his nights hanging out at a porn store buying videos and sharing pizza from work and and making friends and being social oh, wow. and somehow awesome. that is denied and i'm like well, wait a minute you can't talk out of both sides of your mouth here mister mm. you know you, you can't revise history or your history you have to accept it and and move on yeah but he's not doing that he's just destroying and dividing so yeah all right next let's queer up the world view <laughs> Russia hired anti-LGBTQ U.S. broadcasters to push divisive propaganda in America. According to a recent Department of Justice indictment, numerous anti-LGBTQ right-wing broadcasters, including Tim Pool and Dave Rubin, have been inadvertently working for a Russian government-funded media company. The indictment reveals that Russia is backing former President Donald Trump's 2024 campaign, though there is no clear evidence these broadcasters knew of the company's origins. The FBI is investigating this case, which echoes the Russian troll farms that manipulated social media during the 2016 and 2020 elections. On Wednesday, the Biden administration disclosed Russia's ongoing influence efforts. While the DOG sees 32 web domains used to spread Russian disinformation in the U.S., the indictment alleges RT, formerly Russia Today, a state-controlled media outlet, covertly financed Tennessee-based Tenet Media with nearly $10 million over the past year. Tenet Media, which features the hateful broadcasters, has released over 2,000 videos in 10 months on platforms like TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, amassing over 20 million views. Although the indictment refers to Tenet Media as U.S. Company One, its description aligns with Tenet Media's own YouTube profile. Two RT employees who use pseudonyms, Helena Shudra and Victoria Pesti, respectively, to manage the company's funding and content. The DOJ highlights that Tenet Media's anti-LGBTQ videos align with Russian goals to deepen domestic U.S. divisions and manipulate American political discourse. I say fee fi fo fum, I smell the orange one in this <laughs> one, right? I, I don't know. <laughs> 216, 2016, 2020, the creepy relationship mm -hmm. between mm -hmm. Trump and Putin. I, that has to be, this has to be an underlying theme well, to this. Well, I mean, I think we have to be realistic that whether that Trump and Putin have an actual alliance, it's the fact that Putin views Trump as someone who's so weak that he can manipulate him mm -hmm. um, and, and also manipulate many Republican lawmakers. I mean, it has been um, on before this DOJ indictment, there was news stories of um, you know, ha senators and re House of Representative members, including Marjorie Taylor Greene, retweeting these stories um, that were clear Russian propaganda, things such as, you know, to get people to, you know, against uh, support for Ukraine. Um, so it's not just LGBTQ issues, and it's infiltrated our in our, our, our government. So um, this is, you know, I hope the DOJ can have success with this um, case. Um, you know, I know that anytime people hear Russian interference, it kind of, mm -hmm. they kind of black out because it kind of is like beating a dead horse, but it's out there. And we have to remember, and I didn't mean to interrupt you, Francesca, but we have to remember that the Republicans' game plan are twofold, divide and conquer, 
and and project. Mm -hmm. So when they constantly are projecting that Democrats tend to be communists and yeah. Marxists, and it's like, well, wait a minute, you've got $10 million being dumped into Tennessee in one year for a media company that has only had an iffy success rate prior to last year and suddenly they're flush with money from oh yes two representatives who are both russian and obviously russian as they admit that they are russian mm -hmm. okay if there's smoke there's fire it's not an issue of right. we're making this up and then on top of that david rubin who is an openly gay man with a husband is saying the most vile things about the community and it's like yeah. really now <laughs> Do you want to stab your own family? But you seem to be. And I just don't understand why somebody would be, unless they're high on the you know, popularity of the videos money. or the money. Right. Why would you, I mean, if you're openly gay, why are you doing that? Right. Well, I have to say hats off to the DOJ and the FBI. I mean, just last year, Trump was like, after he was indicted, oh, no, we've got to defund the FBI and the mm -hmm. DOJ. And this is exactly why we need these agencies in our government. Mm -hmm. So carry yes. on, DOJ. <laughs> Next, let's queer up gay culture. USC faces backlash over controversial roast of Kamala Harris. The University of South Carolina, USC, is under fire for hosting a comedy roast of Democratic presidential candidate Kamala Harris on September 18th. The roast will feature right-wing provocateurs Milo Yiannopoulos and Proud Boys founder Gavin McInnes. The event scheduled to take place in the Russell House Ballroom has sparked outrage as nearly 24,000 USC students, faculty, and alumni are demanding its cancellation. Yiannopoulos and McInnes, known for their racist and anti-Semitic rhetoric, will be, serve as, quote, roastmasters for the event. Kamala Harris will not be attending it. The roast is sponsored by Uncensored America, a group claiming to champion free speech. The group's promotional material, which includes an offensive depiction of Harris with vulgar imagery, has fueled further condemnation. However, USC President Michael Amaritis and Board of Trustees Chairman Thad Westbrook have defended the event saying, quote, we do not know what the speakers plan to say during the event but they have used vulgar language and promotional material, and they have said troubling and offensive things in the past, end quote. Derek Johnson, NAACP president and CEO, criticized USC stance, urging the university to cancel the event. Johnson wrote, quote, if South Carolina's university, South Carolina University's leadership values their black students, it's only right that they shut down this, sh shut this event down, end quote. This incident highlights the need to understand the difference between free speech and maintaining a respectful campus, campus environment. I don't think people should attend. I think we should remember to vote, 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 vote. Um, it's not necessarily a fair free speech campaign, if you ask me, because if you're going to do that for Kamala, are you going to do that for Trump? You have to play it up on both sides. Then it would be considered somewhat of a free speech situation. But the fact that it's more of a light attack, they're going to word it a certain way. They're going to put it a certain way. And, you know, the Proud Boys who are very present and very relevant in a lot of the higher places, they're going to allow these things to happen because they're a part of the whole situation from the beginning. But they're not going to act like it. They're going to throw their stones and hide their hands. So... I say it should be canceled, or if you're going to do that, make sure there's one scheduled two days later for Trump. Well, and this is a disaster, even from, from a public school perspective, a business model perspective. The fact that you have a history of these two gentlemen, and I'm using that term loosely, <laughs> the hate rhetoric, the, the materials that they have issued, the videos, the YouTube channels, all of that, you really think that this is a roast? Exactly how are we discussing comedy roast? Because you have a long-standing history of the, of the views of these two people and the people that support them. Mm -hmm. You have 24,000 students and faculty saying, back down a little, take it slower. 
And yet you have the board saying, oh, well, we're just, we're not sure. We acknowledge that this might be a rough moment. Well, then if it's a rough moment from a perspective as a business, why are you putting yourself to, up to fail? Exactly. This is nothing but a tragedy for the university, not to, not just the, the lack of respect to the students that are asking for you to respect them as they are paying to go to your university. This is a disaster in every way, shape, or form. Yeah. I'm just, I'm stunned because it's not just, I believe these people, it's from a business perspective that you're now going to tarnish the reputation of a once what was considered a good, fine university. Um, I have a slightly different view about it. I mean, I think, again, free speech is not what we always want to hear. Mm -hmm. And it's a slippery slope to ever try to curtail it, whether we think it's as deplorable as the messaging. Um, I think it's very difficult. And I think it's not a good look for um, no. Democrats who are, who are the our, our party to be putting out um, anything that limits free speech. Now, what I would suggest is they bring to light what they're saying at this event and they put it on camera and we show the world because a lot of these things, when we cancel them, what we do is then we give them more fodder that, that, that we're not, we don't support free speech and it, it gives them energy. Um, the only reason I would suggest it to be canceled is because it is being hosted by someone who is a domestic terrorist, um, which is what we've labeled the Proud Boys as domestic terrorists. And if the same event was being held by uh, Hamas or someone at the university, I guarantee it would probably be canceled because they are a terrorist organization as you know. So the Proud Boys being part of it is, is the biggest reason because they have actually, you know, been identified as domestic terrorists. But as far as the language, as terrible as it is, I think we have to be willing to say, you can say as much as you, as many bad things as you want about me. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that's fair and fair game in our system. Mm. And I like what you had to say about um, having a dual roast, one for Kamala, one for mm. Trump. Yeah. Where's Joan Rivers when you nah. need her? <laughs> Bring her back Joan Rivers. Back. <laughs> then it might be fair, right? Exactly. Oh, it wouldn't be fair. Joan would eat them. For <laughs> eat them up. Equally, though. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. Free speech is a difficult one, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, next, let's queer up trans rights. Trump spreads false claims about schools and transgender care again. We are not surprised. In a recent discussion with Tiffany Justice, a co-founder of the anti-LGBTQ group Moms for Liberty, former President Donald Trump made unfounded claims about transgender issues and schools. During the fireside chat, Trump asserted that schools are performing surgeries on students to make them transition, a statement that is categorically false. Trump stated, quote, the transgender thing is an incredible thing. Your kid goes to school and comes home a few days later with an operation. The school decides what's going to happen with your child. End quote. He further added that many of these children regret their decision in the future. Contrary to Trump's claims, gender affirming surgery is not performed on minors. In fact, schools are not involved in any form of medical transition. Additionally, the rate of regret for gender affirming care is notably lower than for common procedures like tattoos or weight loss surgery. Moms for Liberty, which has a history of opposing LGBTQ rights, has been active in efforts to censor LGBTQ content in schools and supports laws against LGBTQ discussions. The organization is recognized as an extremist group by the Southern Poverty Law Center. Trump's appearance at the recent Moms for Liberty event in D.C. also included false statements about athletes misgendering Algerian boxer Imani Khalif and Taiwanese boxer Lin Yuting. Despite Justice's attempt to correct him, Trump continued to misuse pronouns, revealing a troubling disregard for accuracy and respect. Um, Trump has a very long history of um, inaccuracy and respect, uh, disrespect. Um, this story, again, is another another really desperate attempt by mm -hmm. Trump to mm -hmm. you know, feign uh, support from these extremist groups um, and also his you know inability to actually come up with an, an accurate statement to come out against the community. Um, you know, I would say it's probably harder to get kids like to see a school nurse <laughs> in school yeah. than having actual surgery in a school. I mean, who is sitting there thinking, oh, yeah, he knows what he's talking about. I mean, it's it's so absurd to imagine this. But yet the person that's running to lead our country is saying this out loud on tape over and over. Well, if you look at the polls, whatever the new percentage is, it's that many percent of people that are believing that kind of 
stuff that he's spewing out of his mouth that makes absolutely no sense, Ignorant. right? So it, it's kind of scary. And, you know, Mrs. Justice, which is really interesting that her last name is Justice. Very. Um, she's from Florida. Oh, yes. And this is, you, this is her, her uh, stomping ground here, and she started all of the stuff here, and now it's become nationwide. So, of course, he's aligning with somebody like that to keep on bringing back this message of, you know, fear and using trans people, especially kids, you know, as a dangling carrot to the voters. It's horrible. It's horrific. And none of that makes any sense. At all. At all. Kids don't get surgery. No. You know, they don't. <laughs> well, I think it's funny from the Moms for Liberty because for years, the my understanding of their, one of their important premises is that they're involved because parents need it. Schools have taken over the parents' role in so many different levels, deciding what books they read and who their friends are and how, what kind of discussions of sexual health and, and mental health they have. And yet, the schools have been begging parents to be more involved in their children's lives. And suddenly, parent, you know, moms are going, well, we want that back. It's like, yeah, but what you're saying isn't true. Mm. There are no, there's no proof of any of this. And the fact that nobody on Donald Trump, well, I shouldn't say nobody, we don't know for sure because they probably are, nobody on Donald Trump's team seems to be sitting there advising him saying, what are you saying? This is easily challenged and easily checked. Yes. And yet you're spewing this as if nobody ever knew what a computer was or media is today. Mm -hmm. right. So it's, it's kind of laughable, especially since moms, from my understanding, most of the Moms Against Liberty candidates across the nation have been failing at, yes. at yeah. earning, you know, a second term or a new office. So it's like the more crazy they get, the less they succeed, and yet they go on about the world being against them. Sure. Well, but the that's sex, just angry. The sex scandals lay within. Oh, yes. A lot and that, we don't even begin that. Yeah. Stuff, we don't, yeah. don't forget that. I mean, it's on it, brand for Trump. <laughs> yeah. It's on brand. Exactly. Well, next, get ready to ring in the new year with the South American cruise adventure. Celebrate New Year's with nonprofit Hotspots Happening Out Travel Club on a stunning journey from Buenos Aires to the Caribbean. Begin with a vibrant New Year's Eve in Argentina, explore Buenos Aires' cultural highlights, and set sail on the majestic princess. Cruise through iconic destinations like San Paulo, Rio de Janeiro, and Fortaleza, with stops in Dominica and St. Kitts. Enjoy luxurious amenities, free transfers to over 20 Florida cities, and a special home drop-off for Broward and Miami-Dade residents. To experience this extraordinary adventure, book now at happeningout.travel. Tonight's broadcast is presented by viewers like you and the generous support by Visit Lauderdale. Everyone under the sun. Next, we are proud of our special partnership with Sunshine Cathedral, the world's largest queer church here in Fort Lauderdale. Supporting that partnership, we are broadcasting from our permanent set here at Sunshine Cathedral at the Happening Out Television Studios. We broadcast Sunshine Cathedral's Sunday International Service at 10.30 a.m.
We finish tonight's queer news headlines with a segment we call LGBTQ One Minute News. LGBTQ One Minute News lets queer up entertainment. Anticipation builds for Luca Guardanino's Queer as the movie clip gets viral. Luca Guardanino's much anticipated drama Queer is inching closer to release. Fans are eagerly awaiting the first trailer, but for now, a newly revealed clip offers a taste of the magic to come. Premiered this week at the Venice International Film Festival, Queer stars Daniel Craig as American expat William Lee, who starts a passionate affair with Navy vet Drew Starsky in 1950s Mexico. In the clip, Lee flirts awkwardly at a bar, failing to win over the crush, the film described as Guardanino's sexiest work yet, has been picked up by A24 for distribution. We can't wait for, wait to see more. Why not? Now, I will say I am intrigued. I'm more anticipated for this now more than ever. <laughs> I mean, I think it's interesting to see Daniel Craig play this character. And it mm -hmm. also could cause some backlash because, you know, there has been some backlash against, you know, not bringing in LGBTQ actors in movies that are playing those big roles. So, you know, we'll see. But it looks interesting. But I think it also makes the audience expand their minds. Yes. I know a reporter had asked him at the Venice Festival, is there going to be a gay James Bond now? And he just supposedly rolled his eyes. Yeah. So I think that's great that he just let's Played move it on, right? I'm yeah. just excited he's willing to take on such a storyline because, I mean, he could pretty much do anything he wants. So sure. bring it on. <laughs> LGBTQ One Minute News, Let's Queer Up Sports. Fantasy football drafts get a hot new gay twist. As NFL season kicks off, fantasy football drafts dominate virtual spaces, na spaces nationwide. Some, like ESPN analyst Mina Kimes, gay friend, add a playful twist to the trend by choosing players based on looks. Kimes has shared his rankings, which are a mix of athletic prowess with eye appeal, something gays understand better than anyone on the earth. Quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo and Patrick Mahomes top the list, while wide receiver Stephon Diggs and Saquon Barkley are also score also score high. Here, take a look. I am an NFL fan, but the guys that are playing now, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I mean, listen, they're, they're expanding their audience, I guess, in some ways between the gays and the Swifties. Um, mm. The NFL has no uh, lack of viewers, though, for sure. And they're nice to look at. Absolutely. I personally don't really do football, but I would do football. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Let's well, do it. I just think that a real, a real gay fan, any, I mean, most of the guys I know that are super sports fans, yeah, they're pretty, but they'd be like, okay, come on, this team's going to suck because, you know, there are better players and let's get this done. So a real... A, it's a different kind of fantasy football. I, yeah, exactly. Hello. <laughs> exactly. Touché. But That's I do know different. that most of my friends that are hardcore would be just laughing their asses off going, no, this isn't the right team to have. Mm -hmm. But, you know, go for it, NFL. Let's do well, what we have to. Kick off is tonight, so enjoy the season. Exactly. <laughs> LGBTQ One Minute News, let's queer up entertainment. 
Mario Cantone teases, and just like that, season three with hunks. Mario Cantone, known for portraying Anthony Marantino, gave fans a sneak peek of and just like that's third season. Cantone's character, originally introduced as Charlotte's wedding planner in Sex and the City, is gay and has a larger role in the spinoff series. Recently, Cantone shared photos and videos from the set hinting at a bakery launch called Hot Fellows in New York City's East Village. It featured muscled men in tight denim. The main cast, including Sarah Jessica Parker, Cynthia Nixon, Kristen Davis, Sarita Chaudhary, and Nicole Ari Parker, and John Corbett will be returning in the third season, except Sarah Ramirez and Karen Pittman. Excitingly, Rosie O'Donnell and Sebastian Pigazzi, um, as Anthony's love interest, will be joining the cast as regulars. Um, I think Mario Cantone is probably the best thing of Just Like That. Mm -hmm. um, I do hate watch it, so I will, <laughs> so I'm all for um, his character and his storyline because it's um, it, it's very on brand for him, and he brings like the biggest laughs I think to the this mm -hmm. this reboot. A hundred percent, and I think he's super believable. I had a connection with him in 2020 during COVID mm -hmm. through Cameo. Um, a few girlfriends and I got him to do a cameo for my best friend for a birthday, mm -hmm. and he did like a four minute cameo, and he went on and on and even with me interacting with them he was hysterical and amazing so he brings an authenticity to his character yes. on screen which stems from his own character i believe so i love him he's just so amazing lgbtq plus one minute news let's queer up gaming trans singer milla jam stars in playstation game concord making history Singer-songwriter and black transgender activist Mila Jam is the voice and portrays Baz, a wife knife-yielding free gunner in PlayStation shooter Concord. This groundbreaking role makes her the first playable black trans woman in a major video game. Jam, known for queer anthems like It's Raining Them and Eye on You, shared the exciting news on Instagram. Baz's fierce, fashion-forward addition to the roster. Jam is also the first trans artist to feature at the DNC. Concord is being shut down on September 6th for only two weeks since it was launched, and many critics are claiming it is due to the LGBTQ content. Well, I'm excited that she's breaking grounds, not only on a political, sc political scale with DNC, but this is exciting to see her being represented having the opportunity to make play a role in a game on the level PlayStation level. Um, I wish it wasn't a shooting movie. I mean, mm -hmm. a shooting game. But we got to start someplace. Yes. True. So True. I'll, 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 you know, th this week I'm sensitive to shooting games. So um, right. I'll take it where we can go. Well, visibility is visibility exactly. in yes. my eyes. And especially yes. when you're dealing with such a platform that appeals to the general masses, right? Unfortunately, sure, the shutdown is, you know, because it's anti-LGBTQ, and I'm sure there are lots of people up in arms about a trans character, you know, with kids and whatnot. But a lot of adults play PlayStation. Yeah, it's worldwide. Yeah. Do. I mean, uh, this made me think I'm know. old school. I'd like to see, like, a queer reboot of Mortal Kombat with all, like, queer <laughs> characters, because those were from fierce costumes to begin yeah, with. Sure. So imagine that being brought to life. A um, modern day. Yeah, a modern day version. I think it's pretty cool because I was, I'm was one of the people I will create an avatar. Mm -hmm. So the fact that there is an avatar that is somewhat different from the usual, I'm here for it. Yeah, yeah awesome. for sure. LGBTQ One Minute News, Let's Queer Up Trans Rights. Sweetbriar College bars transgender admission, citing a will, yes, a will from 1900. Sweetbriar College, a Virginia liberal arts institution, has barred transgender applicants, citing founder Indiana Fletcher Williams, 1900 will. The will stipulated that the college would serve, quote, girls and young women, End quote. And the current administrators believe that the will must be interpreted in its original context. Previously, Sweetbriar evaluated trans applicants individually. Now, applicants must confirm their birth sex as female and consistently identify as women. However, the college has previously diverged from the will's strict interpretation. Originally, the will mandated admitting only white students. In 1964, Sweetbriar sought state approval to integrate. 
and the college admitted its first black students under a temporary court order in 1966, and the whites-only policy was permanently overturned in 1967 by the courts. Then why not make the same effort now? I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me. I, I can't even believe in 2024 we're even talking. We're going around and around with this whole... I mean, was anybody thinking that Sweetbriar College was like a Judy Bloom novel? It sounds like a <laughs> fake institution, first of all. And second of all, someone should remind the women or people at this university that in 1900, you couldn't even vote if you were a woman. So right. maybe it's time to like update things. Yes. Definitely time for an update, sure. And yeah. it's an arts college. So if there, if there aren't lesbians at an arts college, where are, I mean, I'm not trying to be <laughs> sarcastic here, but you have an attraction to the arts with mm -hmm. the gay, com the LGBTQ community. So if there's a history there of a hundred years or whatever. Sometimes liberal arts is not so liberal. Well, it's, that's proven <laughs> true, especially with this administration. Yeah. I say make it happen. Yeah. Well, attendance has been down in this particular college. Um, they don't have as many students like clamoring to, to go to this college. So money talks, so maybe that will shift things, mm -hmm. you know, so. And lawsuits. And lawsuits, oh, yeah, lawsuit. definitely lawsuits. Well, that's it today. That's it for today's news for the LGBTQ community on the world's first and only daily LGBTQ evening news show. If our community is important to you, please share this news with your friends and family. Join the conversation on your favorite streaming platform. Queer News Tonight is the only live LGBTQ digital television show in the world that is out of the closet and into the headlines. We need your support. For our community is to grow, we must tell our stories and bring them to the attention of the broader world. This is the only place in the world that tells these type of LGBTQ stories in motion and sound. That is the passion of Hotspots Magazine, magazine Happening Out Television Network and Queer News Tonight. I'm your anchor, Jeff Oliverio, and on behalf of these LGBTQ reporters, the anchors of Queer News Tonight, including Francesca Diamori, Buddy Fry, and Corey Billions. We will see you daily at 8 p.m. We remind you, the presidential election is just 62 days away. Stand up for equality, rights, and representation. Make sure you're registered and ready to cast your ballot. Let's make history. Let's vote for a better future. And before we go, we have a special interview. LGBTQ One Minute News. Let's queer up South Florida and Florida. Out for Harris kicks off in Florida when it is set to appoint the first trans lawmaker. Democrats kicked off their Out for Harris campaign in Florida, I was there, rallying LGBTQ voters ahead of the election. Key figures like Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz, actor B.D. Wong, and Equality Florida's Nadine Smith showed their support. Adding to the glory was another development where DEI educator Ashley Brundage, running for Florida's District 65, secured 81% of the Democratic primary vote, despite opposition from Governor Ron DeSantis. Brundage, poised to become Florida's first transgender lawmaker, wow, adds momentum to Democrats' efforts in this critical race. Queer News Tonight anchor Faye What had access to talk to Ashley Brundage about what is at stake at the state and national level for the community. It's Faye What, and I'm here for Queer News Tonight and the Faye What Show, and I am here with the lovely and our future state representative, Ashley Brundage. Woo! <laughs> See, I'm my own audience. Wherever I walk, I just give you an audience, too. I, I felt like I was in the audience, right? so I'm ready. Oh, my yeah, God. Totally. Ashley, yes. I am so happy that you're here today. Thank you. Or do you like my shirt? Uh, yeah. Do you love this, it? This is it. This is, this it. is it, right? Oh, this yes. is why we're here. Oh, yeah. You know? My name is Ashley and I support this message. Yes, I love it. And you got the you got the mission and you're in on it. I, I love it, right? And the assignment. Yes, girl. One hundred percent. You have your chucks and you have your your pearls and you're ready, right? I, I wore my Kamala suit today. Yeah. On purpose, specifically for this reason. I love it. Yes. So Ashley, we've been doing so many stories about you the last year or so because you've been ruffling up some feathers. Oh yeah. Right? Talk about like not staying quiet, right? Not they want us to be in a, a corner. They want us to stop breathing. They yes. want us to stop shining. Yeah. And they you want can't. Us, they want us to not have access to health care. Yes. They want us to not have uh, reasonable reasons to, to grow our businesses. Yes, yes. They, they want to have uh, things like not, not having real 
policies to address the insurance crisis. Yes, they want to tell me what to do with my body. That's okay. Yes. All of that, Ashley, is going on, you know? And so people think that, like, Ashley just came out of the woodwork and now she's here. You've been doing the damn thing in Tampa for over 10 years, right? Yes, well over 10 years. <laughs> in fact, I remember when um, the former state representative, Frank Artilles, mm. proposed the first anti-piece of transgender legislation, and I stomped my butt all the way up to Tallahassee, and I started speaking about that. And I think that that man actually was charged and booked for fraud. Yes, he so, was. So I think it's pretty <laughs> ironic to think that we have uh, legislators that, that think it's okay to legislate against other people while they're not checking their own stuff. Completely. Completely. Yeah. And so here we are at Sunshine Cathedral, right? Yes. A beautiful queer church for LGBTQ plus and our allies, right? How does this wash over you as a woman? We're here, two women representing Kamala, you know? Yeah. I mean, and again, you know, how does this wash over you? I mean, were you, what happened? How did you feel when Biden so eloquently and gracefully stepped down and passed the porch to Kamala? I, I think it was all about change and it was about showcasing that you can go through a moment and realize that maybe right now your time has passed and this is the moment we passed the baton. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's so invigorating. Like I get these chills running through me when I think about this moment. And, I'm, and I sometimes tell people about the fact that I, we have to bring people together, mm -hmm. okay? This isn't a coalition just for Democrats. Yeah. This is a coalition for independents and even some Republican women that I've been talking to that, that don't like what's happening no. in the Republican Party. No. So I'm th super thrilled about the, the, this moment in time and being here in this space. You know how important it is for when, because I'm not saying if, when you win and you are in Tallahassee representing lesbian, representing trans women, re representing anybody who identifies as a woman. Yes. You know, I see that. I'm manifesting it right now, Ashley, all yes. right? You know, my platform is to unite the T and the L. All right, women are just women, period. Yes. And it's so important that the rest of the world knows that. How we do you feel about we, that? We have to have each other's back. Yes. We have to have each other's back. I think about this moment. Uh, one of my really amazing best friends in the whole entire world nominated me to win the Florida Commission on the Status of Women Spirit of the Community Award. Uh. And I won this award a couple of years ago. It included the signed letter from the Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> this guy shows up, right? And he's like, oh, no, no, no. We can't, we, we, we can't let her speak at the luncheon. Well, you know what? Every time he proposes a bill, I'm going to be having an opportunity to speak 30 seconds yes. right from the floor of yes. the State House of Representatives. And this is why, people, if you're watching this right now, you need to go to AshleyBrundage.com. You need to get involved. Yes. We can't win an election nope. on our own. Nope. It requires resources to yep. knock doors. It requires resources to have the ads show up for people yes. so they can see the contrast between me and my opponent. My opponent just gave her first piece of legislation that she ever voted on when she got elected mm -hmm. was to give a one billion dollar bailout to the insurance industry right wow. here in Florida. Wow. Mm -hmm. I, you can't even make this stuff no, up. She removed heat protections for workers. I mean this is uh this is really important to know that there's some serious contrast happening yeah. here. Completely. Yes. Completely. And you know when during DNC uh, a couple of weeks ago, right, when Michelle Obama got on stage and said, you know, when they go low we fight. Yes. Right? And that's what I'm getting from you uh -huh. right now is that we're fighting, we're here, we're going to make this happen, right? It's our time. Yes. And it's basically good against evil. It's like if people doesn't don't know my qualifications, just type in Google. Google Ashley Google Brundage. Will Google will not hurt you. It no. will be really simple. It will tell you exactly that I have a lot of qualifications. So it's all about us making sure that we understand the ability to tell people the differences between people who are supporting me and people who are supporting Karen. Yes, there you go. All right, so AshleyBrundage.com. We will see this beautiful being representing us in Tallahassee. I'm Faye Watt. We'll be right back.